Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Oder, and today I'm going back to my chemistry teaching days a little bit, and we're going to examine the science about water pans. Do they work? Should you use them? What are the considerations when you make that decision? Now I'm going to be talking a lot about numbers in this video, but do not let that intimidate you. There's a lot of calculation that went into where I got these numbers, a lot of dimensional analysis and stuff that I pulled out of my chemistry tool book to try and figure these things out. I'm going to spare you all the details, but I'll give you the big important numbers that are going to factor into how you make your decision about whether or not you want to use a water pan. Also, I'm going to be drawing in some examples that might blow your mind about the energies involved when using a smoker. Now, when I was thinking through this, there were two questions I wanted to answer. Question number one is, does the water pan contribute a significant amount of moisture to the cook chamber? Number two, does it suck up too much energy and make your smoker inefficient? And to answer the first question, we have to start with the wood that we're using. So let's go over some basic facts about the wood. I use almost always white oak, sometimes pecan, but we're going to use white oak as our example. And you can draw conclusions about other wood types from that as a basic model. Now first, a cord of wood is 4 feet by 4 feet by 8 feet. So what does that make it? 128 cubic feet? I think it does. 16, 8, 128. Yes. Okay. <laughs> now in that cord of wood, typically once the wood has become seasoned, it weighs about 4,200 pounds. And pardon my bad handwriting. I've never had great handwriting. So here we go. 4,200 pounds. 4,200 pounds in a cord of white oak. Now that sounds like a whole bunch. And it is. Okay. And of that 4,200 pounds, by the time it's seasoned, there's about 20% moisture. 20% moisture in the wood. So that means that there are 840 pounds of water in that quart of wood. That's a lot, right? It's only 20%, but it's a significant amount of water. So when you're burning that wood, you're going to be releasing that water that's trapped in the wood into the cook chamber. So the question you have to ask is, is that way more water than what I'd be contributing with a water pan? Is it even worth my time to include a water pan? So that's what we'll investigate here. Now, I wrote these numbers out, so this would be faster and easier. Now, a couple things you have to know before I explain what these numbers mean. Typically for me, a brisket cook, which is going to be our test example here, takes about 16 hours. Of that 16 hours, about 12 hours is unwrapped, give or take. Also, when I put a water pan in there, that water pan is a hotel pan. So I use those to hold water because they have a relatively large surface area. And right about the time it's time to wrap, those water pans are either almost empty or completely empty. So that is what I'm working with when I'm doing these calculations. Now, the first question. There are 69.6 pounds of trap water in the wood that I use during the first 12 hours when the brisket is unwrapped. I'm discounting what happens after the wrapping because it's protected from the outside water anyway. So during that 12 hours, about 70 pounds of trap water is going to be um, released from that wood and then go through the cook chamber. Also, one water pan that I use holds about 11 liters of water or 24.2 pounds of water. So if you're just looking at this, you would say that adding one water pan adds about 35% more moisture than what you would get with just the wood. Two water pans, 70%. Three water pans, 105%. And if you did four water pans, went nuts with it, you'd get 140% more water. That's a lot more water. That's two and a half times as much as you started with. That's what you might think. But here's the issue. That would be completely wrong. And the reason behind it is chemistry. To understand why those first numbers that we generated for how much extra moisture we get are wrong, we have to think about what wood is made out of. Now we know that it's 20% moisture, but the part of wood that isn't moisture is made up of three main components. One is cellulose, one is hemicellulose, and the third is lignin, okay? And they're all primarily carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And when you burn those things, you produce mainly two compounds carbon dioxide and water vapor. So you can have wood that's completely dry with zero water trapped in it. And when you burn it, you make water. So even propane, when you burn propane, it produces carbon dioxide and water vapor. If you've ever fired up a grill when it's really cold or you light a fire somewhere next to some metal, a lot of times you'll get condensation of water on the metal surface because you have 
the water vapor from the fire that meets the cold metal and condenses and makes liquid water. I remember one time I saw uh, somebody explaining how to run a smoker and he said that, oh, that, that water on the metal, that's the water that's coming out of the metal. It was trapped in the metal. It was not trapped in the metal. That is simply condensation of water vapor. Now, as an example of this, right here, we have the basic formula of cellulose. So cellulose is about 40% of white oak. And what you have is basically glucose molecules stuck together. That's not super important. But what is important is you take that stuff, you burn it with oxygen, and you make CO2 and H2O. So in addition to the water that's trapped in the wood, you make water simply by burning the solid components of the wood. Now to make this a little simpler even, I wrote the names underneath. We have cellulose plus oxygen makes carbon dioxide and water vapor. And the same basic process is true for hemicellulose and lignin. And they make up about 90, 92% of white oak. And then there's some other smaller extractives, they're called, that make up a small portion, but they will also burn and produce majority of the same compounds. Now, disclaimer here. Wood does not undergo complete combustion. If it did, then smoking with wood would give you no more flavor than if you smoke with propane. And that wouldn't really be smoking at all, would it? But the majority of what you're producing is this stuff. And it's only the tiny, tiny minority of other products that flavor the meat. So uh, white oak has vanillin in it. So associated with vanilla flavor. So those kinds of things will flavor the meat but they only make such a tiny fraction of what the wood actually produces when it burns that for our purposes today, the difference is so small that it really makes no difference to our purposes when we're talking about water pans. I wanna clarify one thing just a little bit more. Complete combustion is when you take something and you burn it and you make only carbon dioxide and water vapor, that's it. That's to say that you don't make anything else. Whenever you burn wood, you never achieve complete combustion. When you burn propane, you get pretty darn close. That's why propane doesn't really taste like anything. So complete combustion is only carbon dioxide and water vapor, and there's other compounds that you form from like side reactions and other stuff going on in the burning process are what gives wood smoke a specific flavor. So for our purposes today, we're gonna assume that it gets so close to complete combustion that we're gonna base all our calculations on complete combustion. Now, when we take into account the water that comes from the combustion of the wood, we have 78 pounds of water that comes from cellulose, 52 pounds of water that comes from hemicellulose, and 46 pounds of water that comes from the combustion of lignin. In addition to about the 70 pounds of water that we had trapped in the wood itself, that means that during the 12 hours when I have briskets on my smoker unwrapped, the wood contributes 176 pounds of total water. Now, that's a lot of water. After doing all this, and we look at the amount of water contributed by those water pans, now we have a more accurate estimation of how much extra water they provide in the cook chamber. By adding one of those pans, I add 9.8% of water. That's some. Is it enough to matter? Maybe, maybe not. Two pans, 19.6%. Three pans, 29.5%. Four pans, 39.3%. By the time you get to four pans, that's a pretty big difference. An extra 40% almost of water that's going through the smoker it seems to me to be a pretty big deal. But when I look at the volume of those water pans in relation to the size of my smoker, I see it's not really taking up all that much volume. One pan is only 0.58% of the volume of the smoker, of 500 gallons. Four water pans is only 2.32% of the volume of the cook chamber itself. Now to translate to say a 60 gallon backyard smoker, all you'd need to do to get the equivalent of four pans of water in my smoker is a half size hotel pan. That's something that would hold about five liters of water. So not too crazy. So to answer question number one, it sure seems that water pans do add a significant amount of moisture to the cook chamber. Now to answer the second question, does using a water pan or multiple water pans ruin the efficiency of my cook? Now, when I use my 500 gallon pit, and I use it for say 16 hours to do a full brisket cook, you know, cook 20, 25 briskets in there. I produce about 2.88 times 10 to the ninth joules. Okay, what that means is it's a lot of energy. To put it in perspective, it's about the same amount of energy as 1,500 pounds of TNT. So the reason your smoker doesn't blow up while you're burning wood inside isn't the total amount of energy, it's the rate at which the energy is released. TNT obviously releases its energy extremely fast but the wood has a lot of energy stored in it and you're using a lot of that energy to cook your food. Now, the question 
Does the water absorb too much energy? Well, the water absorbs 1.14 times 10 to the eighth joules if it all heats up to uh, 212 degrees Fahrenheit and then evaporates. So I think that's a good approximation. And that's about 4% of the energy that you produce. But keep in mind that you're not using that energy 100% efficiently anyway. The smoke and air that leave your smoker are still hot. So you didn't absorb all of that energy. So an estimation would be that maybe this is closer to 10% of the total energy that actually gets absorbed by the cooker and the meat that's in the cooker. So is it a ton of difference? No. Is it a significant difference? Yeah. You'll burn less wood if you don't fill up your smoker with water pans. Is it worth it? I don't think so. For two reasons. Number one, you want that extra moisture in the cook chamber. And the second reason I'll show you right now. Don't be intimidated by the graph. If you don't like graphs, don't worry. I'll explain exactly what it means in the end. But let's give you a breakdown of what it is. Here we have energy on this axis and we have the number of molecules. Okay. If that doesn't mean anything to you, don't worry. What I'm talking about is how much energy the gas molecules have that are produced from a fire. In this case, we have two different temperatures. So I use blue for the low temperature, red for the high temperature. And this dotted line represents molecules that have enough energy, enough heat energy to burn your meat. Okay. This would be the peak right here. That's the temperature of the gas produced in a lower temperature fire. This peak right here would be the temperature of gas produced in a high temperature fire. Now, these peaks aren't that far separated from one another, but the important thing is how many of those molecules have enough energy to burn the meat. So if you look at this, even though these peaks aren't too separated from each other, when you cook at a higher temperature, way more molecules have enough energy to burn the meat. Whereas at a lower temperature, only a tiny, 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 tiny number of molecules would have enough energy to burn your meat. So all that is to say this, okay? If you're trying to cook hot, make sure that you have something there to absorb the energy of the really, really fast moving high temperature molecules in there, high energy molecules. So for that reason, I would say that it is a great idea to use a water pan, not only because it adds a significant amount of moisture to your cook chamber, but number two, it absorbs the energy of those really excited molecules and helps to prevent the meat in your smoker from burning. Now, using a water pan does use up more energy and makes your fire a little bit less efficient, but I would much rather burn a slightly less efficient fire without burning the meat than to burn a more efficient fire and risk burning the meat. So for that reason, I highly recommend that you use a water pan or water pans, depending on the size of your cooker, so that you get ideal barbecue weather in the cook chamber of your smoker. One other note is when you include the water pan, make sure that it has enough surface area, that is, it's not too deep so that it can provide lots of moisture to the cook chamber. If you have something that, you know, might have a lot of volume, but the actual exposed part is really small, like imagine a five gallon bucket, a lot of water there, not a lot of place for it to escape. That would not be ideal. I would say something that's nice and shallow, nice and flat, and then you'll get the best quality results from using that kind of setup. As Mad Scientist Barbecue, I feel it's my obligation to try to explore some of the science behind why we do what we do in barbecue to find out what's a myth and what's true. And it appears to me at least that including water pan is something you definitely want to do. If you enjoyed this video, you can look for other scientific videos that I'll be putting out in the future, but make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so that when I put out those videos, you get notified and you can follow along. Also, you can follow me on Instagram, trying to increase my presence there and Twitter at Mad Scientist Barbecue. See you guys next time. With all the craziness and stuff going on right now, uh, a lot of people have their kids at home and they probably still have classwork and I don't know how much instruction they're getting. I spent several years working as an AP chemistry teacher, an AP biology teacher, and a number of other different subjects. So if any of your kids need help, you want to hire a tutor for them, you can contact me at my email and uh, we'll see if we can work something out to maybe do some tutoring remotely.